and welcome to another exciting episode of the World Gaming Trade Show. I am your host, Jeremy, a.k.a. your retro activist, a.k.a. your in-game boss that's part of the in-game boss program, a network of gaming and other variety shows. And, of course, along with me on the showcase is Mr. Brando from the Game Attic Podcast. What's going on, man? How you been? Man, it has been a while. Uh, it's been a while for the show, you know. Just we, I took a hiatus, kind of took a break after Christmas time to kind of just work on my other projects. And now our show's back since February, trying to just get all the shows back on and going, getting this show back. But I think it was a good break. It was a good time for everybody to kind of just rest, re-energize, and get ready to you know continue 2022, which is kind of kind of smoothing this way out for this year so far. Not a lot of too many crazy ups and downs, except you know what's going on in the world as we speak, but. That's not what we're here for. We're here for this gaming world. But for me personally, everything's going pretty smooth. Everything's going smooth. We got through some bad weather, some snow and, and stuff. I don't know if you got a lot of heavy snow or not, but we got some heavy snow in Oklahoma, which is always weird because we're next door to Texas. And it's like when Texas gets snow, there's something wrong with the world. But <laughs> but it's been it's been it's been good. Weather is kind of calming down a little bit. I've been getting back into the flow and everything and not feeling all cabin fever cooped up. And whatnot, but what about you? How is it out there? Well, you know, uh, in my world, things could be changing here very soon with my uh, with my job. That's very exciting. So that's going to kind of readjust everything in my schedule and how things are going to work. Maybe not right away, but possibly at end of the summer, things could really pick up for me, and I could be really busy, which is good because I haven't been really busy on that front, and I would like to make some money. So there's mm -hmm. that. Uh, in the real world. Not to dwell on it, but I, I just think we're getting so numb to bad news. We just getting bad news all the time, twenty four seven, and that's kind of sad that we're getting numb to it. But at the same token, uh, the fact that we're just like, oh, here, let me check the internet here. Oh, okay, more bad news. Well, okay, now that we've got past that, what what good is going out there? Because buried into the deep cockles of the internet. There's some good news. There's some awesome stuff. There, you know, I'm super excited for the Turtles collection that they announced. Yes. Just like a week or two ago uh, the, for them to release all those old games uh, in physical form. Mm -hmm. I'm a game collector. And to get these games, the fact that they're going to live on at, at least for a, a good while uh, longer uh, games, I never thought we would get to see released due to rights issues. That's always something with I with. With, with an IP that's uh, massively owned, like Turtles owned by Nickelodeon or whatever, then the game rights, who owns this, who owns that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, along the way, they got it figured out. They made a deal. And we are the winners in that. And, of course, here on this show, we like to take a look at old games and everything like that, things that haven't been touched in a while. Turtles kind of being, I mean, there's new Turtles games every now and again, but nothing quite like some of those old-school arcade games that came out way back in the day. And that's what we do here on, on the show. We take a look at some old games, some old properties, some old IPs, stuff that hasn't been around in a while. We kind of dust it off and we take a look at how we would want these games to come back today, what form, and then who we would like to see take those on. And today we have a very special episode. We've done a couple of these. You know, we did a Star Wars episode. Mm -hmm. We did some extreme sports in 64 mm -hmm. themed episode. Mm -hmm. And today we're taking a, a look into the Marvel world not not the avengers we're not going there x-men we're looking at x-men and i can only say for me man growing up in the 90s x-men especially the cartoon right is where it was at it was that that cartoon uh was that cartoon was fire like between that and the batman animated series mm -hmm. and maybe spider-man a little bit later man my day was set but you know, X Men is what to, you know uh, is what really got me into Marvel, and like in the '90s, even even before Spider Man, like Spider Man, Spider Man. But I never really got a chance to dive into them until that cartoon. And then of course I started reading some comics here and there. Got got into more of the characters. We got really lucky, and those movies really took off in the early 2000s and really kicked off maybe even the modern era of what we consider superhero films. And mm -hmm. uh. They, I mean, Fox had control of that for a long time. They did. Now yes. it, it's back home with the, 
back home in Marvel, and we're going to possibly get to see something going on over there in the near future. But in games, X-Men games uh, have been kind of few and far between. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, with, with some with some notable stuff that we're that may or may not be kind of brought up here on this episode, <laughs> but but we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at X Men games. We're going to come up with like an X Men game that we like to see made, and then we're also going to focus on character specifics. Of course, a long time ago, that a Wolverine and Wolverine always gets his own game, and Wolverine's getting his own new game made by uh, Insomniac, the same guys that made uh, the, the Marvel Spider Man game, which was awesome. I love that game, and I'm excited to see what they can do with the Wolverine property. But I don't think either one of us picked Wolverine for this episode. Not too easy. Too easy. Yeah, some other characters need some spotlight. They need some love. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, so both of us kind of came up with ideas for some, um, you know, for some games uh, to spotlight characters. But before we do that, do we want to, like, take a look at some of our favorite old school X-Men games like guy like, like, like go back in the time machine yes and look at some of those yes let's talk about one I personally played and you know you always talked about this is during the time too where Nintendo and Sega were big rivals so you know exclusivity was a big thing for each one you never saw one or the other and one of the ones I grew up was when I was living in a small town my name my uh one of my close best friends at the time uh, had a Sega Genesis. I didn't have a Sega Genesis yet. I had um, a Super Nintendo. So we had our we had our differences. You know, you come over my place for Super. I come over there for Sega. And the one that caught us playing a lot was X Men Two. Actually, on the Sega Genesis, not X Men One and not Spider Man. The X Men. We're talking about X Men Two, where it was a two D platforming action game co op. And you you know you pick your select characters at the beginning and you go through this and man that was hard and I'm talking about like you got to pick between you got to pick between Wolverine Cyclops Beast Gambit you you chose any of those characters and you go through these 2D levels to get to the end and man that game was hard but it was a good looking game at the time and the music soundtrack was awesome especially the second level if you had to, if you remember you're in this kind of like uh power plant or some kind of like organization building and you hear the music going like do 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 it is like this pattern that you just remember all of this kind of stuff uh i really like that game a lot but on the super nintendo you know you had um x-men i think it was like uh i forgot like children of the atom i believe it was called i believe you you had each X Men had their own separate uh, separate stages they go through and whatnot, and of course I can't leave out the big the big mamma jammas the fighting uh the, no not the fighting games which the fighting games were good you know you got the X X Men fighting games X Men versus Street Fighter three but X Men Legend was a big thing for me I really liked the X Men Legend games uh, mm -hmm. the the four player co op RPG style everybody their own thing but those were a couple. Brando, do you is there any other X Men games that on my list that you have played or not played? Ah, he got the Legends right there. Bravo! Do you have the sequel by any chance? There you go. There you go. And it's sad too that that series didn't get to go further than it should have. Right? I feel like that was a game that should have came back or became a long series, but that was that was Activision, I believe. And you know, knowing Activision. They just jump around so many things. So well, okay. So, so like you mentioned the fighting games, uh, because I also played some of those same uh, old school uh, Spider Man and X Men on mm -hmm. Super Nintendo, uh, and X Men and X Men Two on Genesis. I played those. Mm -hmm. uh, X Men versus Street Fighter and X Men Legends both have something in common: is that they take a formula and start it off. And then it kind of goes off to become something bigger and more encompassing into Marvel. So uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter ends up becoming Marvel versus Capcom, essentially. Like the, the, that is the sequel, so to speak, uh, in terms of like where the next game goes or whatever. It, it, we, we end up getting not just Street Fighter, but the Jill Valentine and stuff mm -hmm. like that with Marvel versus Capcom. And then they made a couple of those games. I think three. Did they make three of those? Uh, 
four actually if you count uh four. infinite if you count infinite if, okay yep yeah, yeah you're right i forgot about that one mm -hmm. all right x-men legends did the exact same thing where you had x-men legends and in and, and then two but then then we move on into uh the marvel alliance um uh, yeah, ultimate alliance yeah one two and then now well we got three on the switch mm -hmm. but because it's that same gameplay style it's that over the head kind of like dungeon crawler aspect and and while also like giving you an rpg with a story uh kind of deal where you know like that kind of like the, the idea started off is to do like an rpg or final fantasies type but then it evolved and it kind of became more and always reminded me of like uh uh the level design and the gameplay kind of like uh everquest it, it was that the name of it uh mm -hmm. champions of norath was it was, okay. was the it was something like that uh just that kind of isometric run around you just beat the heck out of everything in front of mm -hmm. you you could choose your x-men you had a uh I'm, you can have four players on xbox you, you just run around doing some cool stuff i remember after i bought those games um i invited a couple friends over and we had three players playing through x-men legends i'm like and this was like 2014 so <laughs> like mm -hmm. probably a good 10 years after we would have really been doing this but it just brought back memories of like i never really got to play that with a bunch of other people and so like no this game deserves to be played multiplayer and uh yeah you know like then of course you had they did like a wolverine standalone game before that was kind of tied into the you know the movies i remember playing that but I think Mutant Academy. I think I rented that. Do you remember that? that, that I one remember. It, I never played it. Uh, I, I remember renting that. Mm -hmm. But they've kind of like, we've had a lot of games. If you look up on Google and you start, there's, there's like 20, 20 something games. But they're kind of few and far between, especially in the more modern era. Like there's not a lot. And so I think they're, since since superhero games are becoming a lot more popular, especially like putting a lot of money into them, you know, uh, with, we, you know, we saw that with the Batman Arkham games. Mm -hmm. We saw that with the Marvel Spider-Man and now we're getting a Wolverine game, which is awesome. I'm hoping that it kind of lends forward and we can possibly get something else. And that's where we're kind of going with some of our separate character games. Like we could have, we could have chose Wolverine. It'd be too easy. I'm going to go first with my first game, character-specific game. It's going to be completely weird and different, not what you'd expect. My game is going to focus on Professor X. And the gameplay style is going to be an open-world action adventure. How does that work with Professor <laughs> X? Okay. Uh, how does that work? Well, you play as Professor X technically. You play as him controlling other mutants. Okay. And you can bounce from one to another in an open world environment. And so I got inspired by some of the gameplay elements of Watch Dogs Legion. And that you you can kind of have, like, he used, basically the whole game is him using Cerebro. And you have, in this city, you, I mean, come on, it's Marvel, New York City. It's like the hub of, they do everything in there. Maybe just use that. You can use any other city. You can make up a city. It could be Gotham City if you want it. If you want to cross the streams, <laughs> go across the river. But New York City sounds fine. And there are basically the, the loose story idea that I have is that um, none of the other X-Men are available. Maybe they're maybe they're on vacation. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're in space. Maybe they're doing secret wars. Maybe they are captured. Mm -hmm. And basically, you have sentinels in the city, but not just the big giant sentinels. You have actually almost like Terminators. They look human and everything else. And that you have to use Professor X, use Cerebro to bounce between different mutants with different powers and abilities that aren't any of the X-Men. We, we, we don't see any of them. Maybe not at all. Maybe not till the end of the game. Maybe that's your goal. Maybe that's you. You're finding. You're 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 trying to you're trying to to find your your guys. And you're and you're using these lesser known 
mutants and just everyday people, and you're bouncing around from character to character to get the job done. Meanwhile, the, the Sentinels are out there hunting mutants. That's the kind of idea that I came up with. So and, would you say that, like, they would be, what, like, new students, maybe, that joined the academy or something like that, and Xavier is using his ability to control them to help or help out in that way? Not even. Okay. These are just random citizens. Oh, random citizens. Oh, okay. Like, like, like things are getting so bad that the, the Sentinels are hunting random citizens down. Okay. So he's using Cerebro to be able to take control and hop between people. Okay. To help, number one, keep them safe, but also use them because he cannot just go out and try to find his guys. Okay. He's using them and their abilities um, through them to accomplish the, the goal of stopping these Sentinels and finding his team. So what you, your sense is action, what kind of like, I guess, what, what was what kind of like uh, people would he be using? Would he use people that are, that are good at the job that they're at, for instance, like say you got a worker, he you would use him to help, like, I don't know, like disassemble something about them. I'm guessing you're using a lot of them to help do teamwork against these Sentinels or whatever the enemy is, right? So I guess like... Well, the people that he's taken over, they have mutant powers themselves. So you They do, okay. Up, so you, like that's who he's taking. He's not taking over regular people, like regular humans with no powers. Okay. He's bouncing between mutants. And so like... You would find these mutants and you would see their list of abilities and then you would use those to to accomplish your goals. You kind of have like you could bounce around from the city right? mm -hmm. like to, to different people. Yeah, okay. very, very similar to uh, like to like Grand Theft Auto, how you could switch from Trevor over to Michael to do this and that. And then and, and you would have missions where you'd have multiple people. And you would have to use like their their talents and their techniques, like maybe mm -hmm. there's a person who has uh, the ability to see through walls. Okay. Well, for a certain thing, you need that, you know, or it, I, I would try to avoid mimic mimicry too much of current X-Men powers, try to come up with new ones. Okay. But you could, you could definitely have some crossover with somebody who can walk through walls or somebody who could, uh, um, maybe like an Iceman type character or, or, or like use water, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to do these things. But that's, I don't know. I thought that was something, I was trying to think of uh, of a character to base a game off of, and mm -hmm. I'm like, you could you could easily do a gambit game, okay? A, you know, a gambit game is an action game, throwing cards around, using sticks, fighting game. That that sounds like something that we could easily get. Um, but something like this was a little bit more creative, and uh, it was a game. It, it was a game design element that I thought was the most interesting thing about that last Watch Dogs game that kind of flew under the radar. Like, not too many people really talked about it. Mm -hmm. It didn't really get raving reviews. But I, I thought, like, if you take the element of switching around an open-world environment and use, the, use the, the, the people that you find and their abilities to accomplish uh, your set missions uh, statements and then uh, try to uh, fight these Sentinels off. I wonder, would you include permadeath? Like... If they mm. died, would they be gone forever? Because doesn't Legion have that kind of concept, like the permadeath? <laughs> yeah. Would yeah. that be something and you would like to implement it into this game to kind of make it more challenging, or is maybe, that a little bit too much? Maybe what you could do is do a permadeath, but they don't die. Because that I kind of okay. feel like for a Marvel setting, uh, for an ex, maybe that's too much. Maybe they get captured by the Sentinels, okay, and then they're no longer able to. They're able to block off Xavier's. Uh, uh, a capability to lock onto them and they're then gone. Maybe okay. there's a, maybe the place where the, where, where all the other mutants are being held uh, are, are, are shielded kind of like Magneto has that, has a helmet shield. Okay. Um, and he cannot, once they're captured, captured and permadeath quote, they are, they are gone and they're no longer usable. Mm -hmm. So then he would have to try to find other people, uh, in other uh so you so like you would almost kind of kind of like 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 draft a roster uh, of mutants that have powers better at certain things but maybe this one's a better stealth or type guy maybe mm -hmm. he could turn invisible for a certain amount of time and that's his speciality so that you don't want to have him go head to head with a, a sentinel because he's gonna lose but that dude can hide and get intel so also too with 
the and, and correct me if I'm wrong with Legion because I still haven't played Legion. Could you create teams of crews in there? In Legion, that I don't know. That, okay, because uh, I, I remember was, like you you kind of created like uh, something like that. It, it, okay. It was, the reason I, I guess you, go ahead. I know that you could like have like a group of people, and you could bounce it between them during like missions and everything like okay, that. Okay, but they don't know each other, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, or maybe something like that. Okay. The reason um, I was asking was because like since if you're going to Legion, I'm guessing like you're just going to be picking random people and it's going to be just the luck of the draw what power they have and you use what they what you're given, right? I was wondering if there's a way that do you would like to have these people uh, maybe form a group together that you can mm -hmm. always take them on the voyage or do you like the whole like each mission it should just be a wild card and you just pick whoever's available for that mission that you find out in the wild what I would like are? to try to put together a collection of guys like once you start finding people and uh, you use those people to find you know, like to, to spread out Mm. And and unlock more of the city. I guess you could do that whole Ubisoft type thing where okay, <laughs> where you, you climb up to the tower and you do the eagle vision. But yeah, like it um, say like maybe they have some sort of block on parts of the city. They can unblock it for him to find more mutants. Okay, and and then uh, you could draft out and try to find people. I would also like it to be that uh, he's not just abusing this to take over people. He's like. When he takes over somebody, he introduces himself. They know who he is uh, in, in this setting. Like they know exactly who he is, and and, and they know that they're trying to hide. And he basically kind of drafts them and says, "We are coming up. Like you have special abilities to help. You know, help us end this once and for all. That, that you know that, that kind yeah. of deal. that way you're yeah that way you're that way you're not like just like I guess." And making people involuntarily help you, you know? yeah. And I also would think like being being hit by Xavier into your head. I would think there'd be some limitations because I bet it gives you a huge headache. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, would you have a limited time with some of these characters because you know yeah. they couldn't handle it for so long? And I think that'd be right. an interesting challenge too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that that could definitely be definitely be a gameplay mechanic where you only get so much time for each character or mm -hmm. because that could then also create a strategy for doing certain mission types where it's like you, you are, you are on a limit to get this objective complete, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those ideas where it'd be kind of cool. You see him walk into, you know, the, the famous area of, in the in the academy or where he's at and he's sitting in that chair and he puts the machine on and then you kind of get that wave intro of him going to the city and then you're seeing you like scout around just picking who it is and it's cool because you mm -hmm. can kind of like you said each character you can scan to say okay do i want this person no next to the person How about this person no next person so it'd be kind of cool to see that from his his point of view and also like when a person get hurt you can see yourself getting hurt too that'd be kind of kind of cool and that way. So there is potential there. It almost feel like Ubisoft should be doing this too. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, but they've already kind of dabbled with it. Yeah. Yeah. But who do you have in mind to accomplish this goal? That's the hard part that I had for this because it, it you could just easily say Ubisoft Toronto. They're the ones that did it. Uh -huh. The idea it, it initially, um, But I mean, you, I guess every game Ubisoft does now is open world. So I guess it is. Yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. Let's let like for this one. Let's just say them. Okay. Uh, this okay. one was the hardest one because the idea is borrowed from them, and mm -hmm. they've already kind of dabbled with it. They could probably uh, take the idea and and kind of like I don't know, marry it a, a bit with the X Men idea. Mm -hmm. And then uh, since they've already made a game kind of like it, you could kind of uh, build upon it, and make it better. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, my next personal X-Men character I want to use is, um, he's my favorite X-Men character. And he's not really one of the most popular. Well, he's popular in his own way, but he's not part of the main cast. Uh, and that's Cable. And it's funny because, like, I don't know. Cable is so cool. He came from the future. He came back to the present to stop the, the rise of the apocalypse. 
He is the he is the son of probably one of the most hated characters because of his leadership, Cyclops, and of course the woman that becomes Phoenix, uh, Jean Grey, and it's just so funny how that combined. Because I remember watching the cartoon, I loved it, and I'm like, oh great, you're the son of like one of the lamest people ever. But I grew to like Cyclops now. But back in the day, he was not my guy. He was like, <laughs> he's like, look, you you hurt Wolverine. I don't like you. <laughs> and so, um, but no, Cable was really cool. He became a really popular character through, you know, inter- especially people that might got introduced through Deadpool, even through the comics with those two together, to to the uh, to the games that people used him a lot in Marvel's Capcom 2, you know, he, he is a very familiar uh, character. Shout out to Josh Brolin for playing him in uh, Deadpool 2. I thought he did a great job for that. Uh, now, it's easy to say that Cable is he's a jack of all trades with his abilities. And it's easy to say a first-person shooter could work for, it, for this. I mm-hmm. didn't want that. We have plenty of first-person shooters. I want to go old school like the way I play my X-Men old school. I want this game to be like a Contra game. I want Cable and his X Force or whatever he's whose team he's with at the time to go to a way through through from the past to the present to stop the apocalypse or whatever mission they have. But I wanted the whole old school Contra kind of game to go through this, and I just thought that'd be kind of cool. You get different weapons on the way there, or he gets he can gain new abilities as he goes, all this stuff. And then you got you know Deadpool can make an appearance. He can go time traveling. He got. He got a, there's a bunch of characters that he can go through. Sorry, I'm not naming them all off my off the top of my head. But I thought that would just be awesome. And maybe Konami could do it. I don't trust Konami. So I'm gonna go with a company that had their own kind of contra game. And they haven't made a uh, a sequel to it whatsoever. But I love their artwork and I think they can do it. And that's Arc System Works, the people that did Guilty Gear. But the game they did that's kind of like the Contra game is Hard Corpse Uprising that came out in 2011 and I thought that'd be kind of cool with with that that hardcore like uh Japanese animation doing the cable kind of look for these characters with these awesome backgrounds that are 2D.5 to these awesome special effects cuz like if you watch Arc Systems gameplay of Guilty Gear they're phenomenal animation when they fight it looks awesome so I would like to see that especially seeing like was it like the fight apocalypse on, on that space? You know, like the old Contra games or Ninja Gaiden or anything. They always do these grotesque, icky monsters that take off like half the screen. And you know, Paco's pretty freaking big. So he could take off like half the screen and everything like that. And they can have even more fun with it. Adding bonus characters like Silox or Bishop. You know, have fun. With, go at it. So that's what I want for my cable game. That's awesome. Um, so... I know that you don't read too many comics. Um, no. Mm. So, the most recent comic that you know, this might have been a year or so, maybe almost two years ago now. We reviewed it on another podcast on Mon Journey into Comics, and mm. we reviewed this series called Cosmic Ghost Rider. You ever hear a, go- a Cosmic Ghost Rider? Uh-uh. No. Okay, so you know heard a Ghost Rider. Co- yeah, Ghost Rider. Okay, so Ghost yeah. Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider is Frank Castle. So, he was the Punisher. Oh, wow. And then he and then he died and then then he got the Ghost Rider abilities. And then he got cosmic powers from Galactus. Holy crap. And then he died again. <laughs> and then and then he went to Valhalla. And then he got kicked out of Valhalla. What the hell? <laughs> for like breaking another god's nose. And then yeah, uh, Odin told him, I'll send you anywhere in time you want. Essentially saying, hey, you can go save your family. But uh, during his time as Cosmic Ghost Rider, they were, uh, him and Galactus were like going up against Thanos. So he goes back in time to kill baby Thanos. But then he gets there and he, he's just, I can't do it. So then, you know what? I, I'm going to raise baby Thanos to be a better person. That's his goal. Well, he ends up trying to get, he ends up getting an encounter with Cable. Cable comes back at time and is like, no, <laughs> this is bad. And he comes back with a group of people. And they are the Guardians of the Galaxy, led by Cable. Cable leads this version of Guardians of the Galaxy. And the, 
The members are Jubilee, Iron Groot. Basically, it's Rocket, Rac uh, Rocket Raccoon in a mech suit made out of Groot. Okay. Wow. Captain Marvel. This is Kamala Khan's. She has assumed the role of Captain Marvel, and she's got Captain America's shield on her back. Cable is the leader. He's too old for this shit. And my favorite character, who's only literally in like four pages of this comic, <laughs> Jugger Duck. Jugger Duck. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Is it Howard the Duck as Juggernaut? Is that what His we're name getting? is Howard. His name is Howard, but it's not confirmed that it's Howard the Duck. Okay. But you almost okay. have to believe that the dude is, in fact, um, like, like it's got to be. It's got to <laughs> be. Like, Jugger Duck. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I marked out so much. I'm like, why don't we have more Jugger Duck? <laughs> dude cosmic ghost rider kills all of them except for cable within just two pages oh then wow. cable goes back to the future and comes back with more marvel heroes and then as he does this every time he comes back he gets older and older and older and these it, this is like five pages of an assortment spider-man captain america black panther wolverine gambit you name it, they're in there. Blade. And Cosmic Ghost Rider kills them all. <laughs> he just kills everybody. Until finally only oldest man Cable is left. Like he's literally long ass beard, long hair. And finally another portal opens up and it's Thanos from the future wearing a Punisher shirt. Oh, I'm knocking my stuff over. And a gun. And he's like, hey, dad, talking to Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, Come with, and, and, he, and he takes Cosmic Ghost Rider to, the, to his future. The most insane, the first two issues are nothing but hilarity. Like, it is absolute craziness and hilarity. Like, the fact that they're just killing all these characters. Just so, if I'm getting this right, you would like this cable contra game to be where you would have caught uh cable with the selection of all these marvel characters going through the stage and at the end of every stage you're it's fighting Ghost Rider. and you lose <laughs> and you then lose you go to time. the next stage and you bring <laughs> more people and the point and the point of it is you're supposed to just keep losing in every level you go to until the surprised thanos punisher comes out of nowhere <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Look, I love the I love this stuff so I love this book so much. Mm. You know, Cable's awesome. I'm a big fan of the character. And the fact that I look, when when we first started reading this book, I had no idea what to expect. Just like you, I'd never heard of the Frank Castle becoming a cosmic powered ghostwriter. Never really heard of it. And then the more it went on, the more I'm just like this is almost Deadpool levels of ridiculousness, uh -huh. and I love it. The, the 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 really cool part is that like the like the last two issues, because I think it's like a four issue series, maybe it's five, get really heavy and serious with the implications of what it would be if Thanos grew up to be Punisher Thanos, mm -hmm. and what it would mean for Frank Castle and the, basically the future. Why is Cable so dead set on not letting this happen? You know, it's gotta, it's gotta be bad. And, and it is pretty bad. Let's just say it ends with Cosmic Ghost Rider killing Thanos, the, the Punisher Thanos that he helped create. And he goes back in time and puts the baby back in the crib. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, all, it's basically the butterfly effect. Kind, so. Yeah. Kind of, yes. Yeah. And then he puts the the baby back in the crib, and the baby Thanos is like, "Wait, where are you going?" He's like, "I'll see you around, kid." <laughs> <laughs> like, a, uh, and then and then there's a there's like a Thanos issue 
that looks it, for some reason like the the very end of that whole story ends in Thanos number one something where Thanos gets killed by Gamora. I think she like beheads him. Okay. Or something. And then uh, then that story takes off somewhere. But then at the very last part of that issue, from the shadows comes Cosmic Ghost Rider, and he, he pees on the corpse of Thanos, finally getting his revenge. Okay. All these He, he waited decades, <laughs> all these years, just to get revenge. So for the viewers, what exactly is the name of that comic so they can kind of get a glimpse for themselves? Okay. We're going to find it. Uh, but Cosmic... While you're looking Ghost at Rider. that, the question I would like to ask you is, could you see Arc System do this idea, either whatever I have and whatever this story <laughs> is? Yes, because it um, you could definitely run through the levels. Uh, I think you could augment the story a little bit to not just be coming back to that same level to die or mm. to have everybody die. I think you could do different things where you're going through different levels of time. Okay, uh, and, and he can get older can every time he goes to the level too. Like every time, said. every time he gets older. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. book, uh, the book is called Cosmic Ghost Rider: Baby Thanos Must Die. Okay, and uh, it is absolutely ridiculous. It's funny. Uh, basically, you know, we we think of Frank Castle, the Punisher, as kind of like this brooding and dark character, mm. and in this one, went, because of the Ghost Rider spirit, the Flame Spirit. Every time that that part takes over him, he's just not the same kind of character. He like he is he's kind of more Deadpool ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, but the moment that you that you were talking about Cable and kind of doing that side scroll or shoot him up, I'm just thinking of just mayhem, and all I can think about is that Cosmic Ghost Rider mayhem. Those several pages of just absolute like. It's like a collage of this big fight scene, and they're all just losing. And I'm like, this would be hilarious. Um, cause, cause who, who's ever made a game where you just always lose like other than maybe dark souls, but I mean, <laughs> right. That's more trial and error, right? Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here it, is not trial and error. It's like part of the story. Like you're winning by losing. Yeah. So it is weird. So I'm down for either one because like X-Men to me. I think that the more ridiculous it gets, the more the more fun it is, especially if mm -hmm. the, it's a video game first, X-Men second. So, yeah. you know, and who knows, like back in the day on the old school video games, a lot of those X-Men or whatever games Konami did, they normally don't make a lot of sense. It was more of just for the fun factor and then you and then mm -hmm. everything else. So, but with that, those are our two solo characters. Now we got to talk about the big one. We haven't had an X-Men game since 2014. So it's been eight years. It's time for a new X-Men game. But what X-Men game do we see for ourselves? So Brando will go first, talking about his vision of the next X-Men game. And then I will end mine. And then we'll kind of wrap it up. So Brando, what is your vision of the next X-Men game that they should be doing? So my idea is less original on this one. Uh, it, it definitely is kind of taking a, a formula from another popular game that that came out quite some time ago now and uh utilizing that in this and it is rpg uh not necessarily x-men legends style uh this is more uh taking what worked in dragon age inquisition in that kind of combat where you could kind of do some cool stuff with some of the x-men characters mm -hmm. but also uh to start off you make your own mutant. You're, you are in the, you are in this world as a whole new character, and you're seeing stuff for the first time, and you kind of end up becoming a new X Men leader. So maybe, maybe the Cyclops is gone. Maybe Wolverine's gone. The, the typical guys are not there, but some of the other other mutants are there because your hub world, you know, in Dragon Age Inquisition was um, uh, that big uh, castle on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Well, this one would be Xavier's mansion. So okay. you would help, uh, you would, uh, you would uh, maybe repair it. Maybe you're repairing the mansion and you're rebuilding parts of the mansion and you're expanding the mansion. You're getting more people. Um, you're playing through this RPG that, uh, I, again, I, I don't really have like what story you would go through. It would probably be more original. Okay. Um, 
and not something that has been directly been done before because you're playing as a whole new character because your character that you create, you could have a couple different, you, it, I think it'd be really neat to try and put them in different classes and not just with different powers, with different classes and different abilities. And so that way you could kind of kind of custom make your power set, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and do something along those lines. And then your, uh, your team would be kind of like made up of some of the, maybe the existing characters, maybe storm is there, you know? Okay. So she's there, but then you also, if it's RPG, you kind of, kind of have like a healer type character. So I, I like who could do that. I'm not really too sure. Maybe we could make somebody up for that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm more of a newer character, but then Xavier is there kind of leading the way, leading uh, uh, the, the pathway, but also saying that you are, uh, you are the guy who, who's going to lead us into the next generation of X-Men. I don't know. I, I okay. kind of thought something like that of having a hub world with the mansion while also going to big kind of open world. Uh, you, it, it can be in either cities or, or, or somewhere else where you're, maybe you're going up against uh, direct competition. Maybe it's Magneto, but also maybe you have maybe three roles. Maybe the, the government and their Sentinels are involved with Magneto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or not, 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 not together, but also uh, you have like feuding uh, sides, you know? So would you have so. um, any life changing decisions that would change the story? Kind of like Inquisition oh, or Mass Effect? Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You, you uh, definitely with uh, alignment uh, that, and then of course, like if you make something that a big decision that could possibly lead to Xavier leaving or mm -hmm. being captured, like say you side with you, you go full renegade or, <laughs> or if you want to use that term mm -hmm. and, and then you, the, your version of the Academy is, is steered in a certain direction that goes against the very ideals of what they were establishing it for. But then of course, then I feel like you could also not just be good or evil. I, I would like there to be like nuances mm -hmm. um, and shades of gray. I feel like some of that gets lost. Um, especially, you know, and you know, I was going to pick Bioware for this cause it, they've, They've kind of done something like this twice. <laughs> right. right. Obviously, Inquisition worked a lot better than Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda is literally Mass is Dragon Age Inquisition in space. Uh -huh. Same gameplay stuff with establishment, but it just it doesn't work as well. Um, I feel like it could work well here with you establishing, uh, rebuilding the academy and and then be involved with training uh, with, with, with newer, younger kids. I think that'd be kind of cool too. Like mm -hmm. actually like, you're the leader and you're walking around and you can see like younger kids training and you can actually do like little side quests where you could do training with some of them. Okay. Right on. Right on. So, uh, for me, this is, um, uh, very, I'm very simple here. I, the game I'm going to talk about is what I want X-Men to be. And mm -hmm. you can do any story you want. You can go from the classics from the, like the 92 cartoons of those classic ones from, you know, the rise of the Sentinels to the the Apocalypse to Phoenix, you know, all that. But I am a huge fan of Larian Studios' big hit game a couple years ago, Definity Original Sin 2. And this was a, a strategy, well, it was RPG strategy, whatever you want to call it, but it's a four-player work together. Mm -hmm. And you basically on this giant journey to... Um, to save the world or whatever the mission is. It's been a long time since I played it. But I, every time I played this game of creating the characters, customizing your class, picking what abilities that you want to be, you can mix and match. I was like, I want an X-Men game like this. Like, I always wanted an X-Men game like this. I want to play with Wolverine, Cyclops, all those, you know, with multiple... Everybody strategizing and picking what moves are going to be which for each scene. I just think this is a great battle. Like, I, I, when I look at this battle system, the way they do it, I said, Star Wars can do this and X-Men can do this because it's just a cool ideas that they can do with it. And mm -hmm. I, I, and that's really it. I mean, have you ever dabbled in the, the um, Definity Original Sin games? 
I never got a chance to play them. Okay. But I have watched them be played on uh, on YouTube and Twitch before. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of see where I'm coming from when you yeah. see those moves. Like I can see yourself just seeing these awesome moves happen on the playing field of like Cyclops shooting the biggest laser ever across the place to Wolverine. Yeah. Is this there's just so many cool ideas they can do. And the fact that like it all no, like Definity it's almost a game that's trying to get you to try to break the game, to outsmart it. And that's what I like the, this game to do, like your X-Men. But see if you can outsmart the game in other ways. And, and whatever you think is not impossible, it's impossible. So, for example, for Divinity, one crazy time, my, my friend Nam, he's from when Jeremy met Nam, do a movie discussion. Mm -hmm. We were fighting these people on the stairs, and one of, uh, one of the characters got hurt and blood was flowing down this going down, uh, throwing down the stairs and i uh, and could you believe this that you can shock the blood or freeze the blood because it's still liquid that's insane that's insane so imagine if you can do the creativity of if you see if you're psychoff and you see a mirror somewhere in your battlefield if you could shoot at that laser and it could reflect off of something like mm -hmm. let your mind just go there or night or nightcrawler the fact that like he's the only one that hover he's the only one that can hover above everybody to do something like i want a game where it's like the whatever you think is not possible try it what's the worst that can happen even the fact of like using storm like how 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 would the weather work? It's raining everywhere. She can make it rain, and then someone with powers of electricity can electrocute that person. You know, it's really cool what they can do with the ideas that Divinity set the platform out. So that's what I want. I want an X Men game like Divinity Re Original Sin two particularly, and just that's have fun. That's pretty cool. That's really cool, and 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 I definitely think that something like that could work. You know. Uh, it almost kind of seems like uh, it, it's, it's like a take in a way mm. off of like what has come before with the legend style, but it would feel completely and utterly fresh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like especially with, you know, with some of the elements you want to put in there. So that sounds like a really cool idea and something that could easily catch on, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, with, you know, with the modern uh, style of games. Yes. Yes. So, but... Um, yeah, those are our picks. Those are our X. That's our X-Men game. That's his Professor X. This That's my cable with his assistance of putting every freaking X-Men character <laughs> you could ever think of in that game. Why not? You know, it's almost at the point, too, that if they ever decide to do an X-Men beat-em-up game again, like the classic one, that maybe that's the direction they should go. Uh, going yeah. after, uh, after, uh, Cosmic... Uh, Ghost Rider is just have a plethora and eight people can play it and just go hog wild, you know. Well, see, you could also do something like a beat em up where you do play as Cosmic Ghost Rider, and you know how, like, uh, I'll just take for example any sort of beat em up you can think of where you have like uh repetitive enemies, it's like, hey, there's Brad, there's Tom, yeah. there's yeah, you know, there's John, and you could just have them be instead of just nameless goons, all of these actual Marvel heroes. And, and I can see why Marvel wouldn't want to go for this, but I just think it'd be hilarious to see like you repeatedly beating up Captain America and Iron Man and Black Panther in the next mm -hmm. section. Oh, okay, they're back up. You know, they dusted themselves off. They're ready to yep. go again. And you just keep beating the crap out of all these like mainline characters. Like Thor, here's Thor shows up and you just beat the crap out of them. I just think it'd be hilarious. Well, anything is possible, right? I mean, yeah, with, exactly. Marvel, with Marvel being going so big, and the license is now not at EA anymore. And it's, mm -hmm. well, sorry, not Marvel. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Star Wars for that. I apologize. Uh, but yes, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, sorry. it's not exclusive. It's not mutually yeah. exclusive. Yeah, but with Marvel now kind of opening the door for more studios to work with stuff, like Koei Tecmo did Ultimate uh, Ultimate Alliance 3 that was on the Switch to mm -hmm. your your Spider-Man and your Wolverine by Asomiak. Like, there is a chance of someone getting permission to just go crazy on some ideas of characters that can get a moment in the sun and with these comics 
that are still going, there's always new ideas that they can do. So, yep. but with that being said, that is the end of the World Gaming Trade Show as we close the showcase. But remember, you can check out all our great stuff. I recommend you checking out our one of our one of our greatest theme ones, Chrono Trigger. That was one of our favorite ones that we talked about. Talking about what do we want to see from that? Uh, hopefully, we'll see Trigger uh, Chrono Trigger soon since Chrono Cross got a remaster. Maybe we'll get an HD two D two D of it. I don't know, but. You know, we, we talked about Kung Fu and Duck Hunt. We talked about Soul Blazer and Metal Storm. There is so many that you can go back and check out and tell us your thoughts. And we would love to hear it, especially the one last, our last episode was Bunk and Driver. So that was a weird one that you never thought put together, but we made it happen. So, but as you know, you can always check out all my great content on YouTube as the in-game boss program. Of course, you can find me on Twitter at program in. And RetroAmp07 for me. And, of course, Facebook, where we try to update everything on there and post our episode. But as for Brando here. Yeah, you can find me on the, at the Game Addicts podcast. Uh, the show is on a bit of a hiatus right now. But there's still a plethora of, of episodes, 170-something episodes of stuff we talk about, stuff where we're, you're collecting games. We do uh, episodes where we talk about specific consoles, some of our favorite memories and games we played on those consoles, and as well as some data about the stuff that was sold. And, uh, but, yeah, th- you can find that on all podcast services as well as YouTube. And uh, as well as you know, check us out on, like, on the Twitters and stuff like that, on the social medias that Game Addicts play. And, and then I'm also a part of some other podcasts, uh, Rank Em All, where we do some music some music reviews you can check out rank them all podcast on all the same platforms and uh at rank them all uh i believe rank them all pod or rank them all uh, something like that on twitter as well the we have a new season of that coming out soon that, that, that's a weird show where <laughs> like it, it didn't necessarily start that way but it's going to be in seasons because we've been we release it all in chunks just like well a show does and, and we'll podcast there's some podcast new seasons so that's what we're doing with this one season three I guess we'll be coming very, very soon. Awesome. Awesome. And for you guys, leave a comment down below. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us what uh, what developers or publishers you like to see do an X-Men game. It's been a long time. What I bet you people... character? What character yeah. would you like to see an X-Men game for? What character did we not talk about? Do you want to see a Nightcrawler game? Do you want to see a Magneto game? That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, uh do you want to see a, a Colossus game where you just wreck stuff? You know, like, who knows, man? The possibilities are endless. And with that, thank you so much, and we will catch you on our next showcase.